Oh, hello. I'm Robert. I was just addressing this letter, ready to post special delivery. Are you nearly ready for bed? Well, I've got a story to tell you that I think that you... Oh, what was that? It sounded like a plane. It might have been Sadie, the airmail pilot. Once upon a time, a few brave pilots in little planes flew the airmail. Early one morning at Airmail HQ, the chief was giving orders to every pilot on the base. Well, almost every pilot. Pete, you fly the mail to Lima. Gus, you go to San Diego. And Charlie, to Cordoba. Jack and Barney, you two do the route to Panama. And Sadie... But Sadie wasn't there. Where's Sadie? Pilot Sadie, wake up! Yikes, cried Sadie as she fell from her hammock. You're late again, growled the chief. Remember the oath of the airmail service? No wind, no rain, no cold or flu can stop the airmail getting through. Now, you've got a mission to fly, he told her, all the way to Knuckle Peak Weather Station. Yes, sir. Right, sir. I'm ready, said Sadie. I'll get you breakfast, said Mickey the mechanic. No time to eat, said the chief. Get dressed and go. Sadie checked her route map. Oh, my, said Mickey. Those mountains look tricky. Don't you worry, said Sadie. I could fly there with my eyes shut. So Mickey spun the propeller and the engine started with a roar. Chocks away, called Sadie. And the little plane zoomed down the runway faster and faster and then take off. Out past the city she flew, over coffee farms and banana trees, over forests and rivers and hills, out beyond and up and away to the faraway mountains. But as the mountains came into view, dark clouds filled the sky. Sadie radioed ahead to the weather station. Call in Knuckle Peak. Come in, Knuckle Peak. What's the forecast? Over. Way up on Knuckle Peak, a wild wind was blowing. Weatherbird Gusty called Sadie back. This is Knuckle Peak, Knuckle Peak to pilot. A storm is coming. Return to base. Repeat, return to base. Rotten look, said Forecaster Fog. Nobody could fly here in weather like this. But Sadie wasn't ready to give up. Turn back. Well, swipe my stripes, no. Sadie the pilot is on the job and the airmail is going to get through. Things look grim, but don't get nervous. Nothing scares the airmail service. Then up she flew, straight up and into the dark clouds. Suddenly, she heard a loud growl. Was it thunder? Was it the engine? No. That was Sadie's empty stomach. I hope they've got lunch ready when I get there, she thought. Sadie's plane twisted and turned through the clouds, just missing the rocky cliffs on every side. At last, she saw Knuckle Peak and the weather station way up on top. She made it, called Fogg. Such a brave pilot, said Gusty. Yes, or crazy, maybe. Sadie unloaded the mail. There were lots of important letters for Gusty, and magazines, parcels, and a mail order catalogue. There was an envelope for Fogg, too. It's a letter from my sweetheart. Oh, Julietta. And while Sadie ate a bowl of warm soup, Fogg wrote a reply. Then the wind outside gave a howl. The storm is getting worse, warned Gusty. Don't fly now, Sadie. Stay here till it blows over. But Sadie took Fogg's letter to Julietta and swore the oath of the airmail service. The wind may blow, ice and snow, but still the airmail's got to go. Then she turned the plane towards home and flew back across the mountains, back over forests and rivers and hills, over banana trees and coffee farms, all the way over to the city and airmail HQ. Yay! All the pilots cheered as Sadie came sliding down the runway. I've got your supper ready, called Mickey. Yes. At the end of a hard day, all a pilot wants is a good meal and a good sleep. But wait. Here's the chief with more parcels to send and... Uh-oh. 
He's got Sadie down for the job. Over mountains high and oceans deep, the airmail service never sleeps. And that story was called Sadie the Airmail Pilot. She has a very exciting job, doesn't she? But I'm glad I'm not in the airmail service. I like going to bed too much. It's time for bed now. Night night. Sleep tight. Mm -hmm.